one of the huge reasons people want a Tegu is because they think they could keep them exactly how like you keep a dog. Where they're always out and about by your side, you can play with them and just chill with them on the couch. But in fact, that is really not how you should be keeping a Tegu. And today, we're going to cover five reasons why you should not be permanently free roaming your Tegu. And this is about permanently free roaming. Please feel free to free roam your Tegu occasionally, but permanently, there's a lot of problems. Some that might actually happen to you and not the Tegu itself. Let's get into it, guys. Hey guys, how's it going? You know, it's the beginning of a new year. I'll be completely bald. Yellow Aki. Hey guys, how's it going? Like I said, we're gonna be talking about why you should not be permanently free roaming your Tegu. There are many people that will claim to you it is perfectly fine and they've been doing it for years, but one thing they don't really understand is that Tegus and a lot of reptiles can conceal their problems very well. Trust me, I've been through it. So let's get into it and here are your five reasons. Now before getting rolling, I just wanna mention that there are some possible caveats to this. In the United States, if you live in, let's say, Florida, which is kind of strict with tegus right now, you can permanently keep them outdoors. Obviously, they would be in the enclosure outdoors, but you can do that potentially year round. It would be actually really good for them, the natural light and everything. Indoors, even in Florida, might be problematic though, because you're not necessarily gonna have that same humidity that they need inside your house, unless you're dying with like 80%, 90% humidity in the summertime sometimes. So there are little situations to this, I guess, but overall, I think this holds for most of the United States and a lot of international keepers, UK and such. Number five and number four are gonna roll right off of each other, but number five we have, you cannot keep adequate humidity inside your house for them. Inside your house, even like I said, in a Florida type environment, you're probably gonna have at most like 60% air humidity, and that is definitely not enough. And yes, tegus in their natural environment have some areas where humidity is particularly low compared to what our understanding is of them, perhaps even into the high 50%, but don't discount that they have microclimates that they seek out that have higher humidity and that they can burrow into tons of substrate, feet of substrate, feet of substrate, multiple feet of substrate that will have much higher humidity, retain moisture much better, and that is something you're not gonna have in your house unless you're living on dirt that goes several feet down, which I don't know anybody who lives like that. So it's just gonna be very impossible to replicate that and provide the microclimates that you need. Maybe you can come up with some contraption that has uh, that acts as a microclimate and has really high humidity, but I'm telling you, it's just not gonna be possible to the extent that they need it, especially with modern central air and heating and stuff like that. It's really just gonna end up sucking the humidity right out. So it's not gonna be fully possible. You would really need to go, you would really need a specific house design to be able to pull this off in order to keep that humidity level. And as I said, that actually segues into our number four pretty well, which is that if you keep your humidity at somehow, let's say in some possible fantasy land, you keep your humidity at the proper level that uh, Tegu should have, you're gonna absolutely destroy your house. Yes, guys, just think of it. And I guess, like I was mentioning previously, you can't design a house maybe around having a Tegu in it, but don't really know too many people who do that. But just think of the burden of some wooden enclosures and the extra steps you have to do to keep a reptile in a wooden enclosure that requires some humidity. You need to protect that wood against the humidity. And what's a house made up of? Look, I'm no Bob the Builder, and I know his reputation is pretty high, but I can tell you that you're not polyurethaning every piece of wood that makes up your house, and you're not putting some pond liner around, theoretically, your entire inner house. That's not happening. It's just regular plywood that doesn't really need to be treated because it's not expected to be exposed to that type of moisture. And this damage that can happen can cost thousands, 
thousands upon thousands of dollars. So you don't even want to try this and be like, ah, this guy you know, has some BS going on. No, this is actually something that can cause a lot of issues and can actually impact your own health. So essentially as a package, number five, you can't really keep humidity in a house and get it up to the standards that tegus require, nor if it was somehow possible, would you want to because you're gonna destroy your house, put yourself in debt, and also put yourself potentially in the hospital, which in turn, if you're in America, will put you even more in debt. Have I convinced you to not permanently free room yet? Well, if not, number three will definitely do so. But first, I would really appreciate if you check that lower right hand corner and hit that subscribe button, hit that bell as well. I'm posting multiple Tegu videos a month. So if you want some more information or researching on a Tegu pet that you're gonna get in the future, this is the place to be. So definitely subscribe. How do you guys feel about feces being all over the place? Just chilling on your neck to the couch while you watch that sports game. Yeah, I watch a lot of sports. Cause that's what's gonna happen if you permanently free roam your tegu. Hopefully you don't have carpet because that's gonna be quite a mess for someone who, you know, everybody's first dog. I'm pretty sure there's a period where you don't take potty training just as seriously. And you know, I went through that with my dog Thrall and you know, I didn't really appreciate it. He's luckily very potty trained now, but tegus who eat, you know, potentially whole mice, whole quail. And even if you mash some stuff up, it's not just, elegant or refined maybe as a dog diet might be. So it's gonna be a lot more smelly than if you had a dog or cat go on the carpet or go on the floor. And even then it's absolutely terrible. And sometimes you get used to it. And then when you have company over, they're like, holy poop, this smells like poop. And it's really just not a fun time. I guess right there, I feel like that should convince you enough that even if it was perhaps possible to permanently free roam a tegu around, you probably don't want to. It's actually gonna probably make the enjoyment of that tegu worse. And I do wanna throw in that I know people can potty train a tegu that has been done. Although, you know, not the average keeper does that, nor does the average keeper know how to do it. So it's not like it's just very elementary to go ahead and do that. But if you do, that doesn't mean they're not gonna have occasional accidents, you know? Even dogs, we're referencing dogs going inside the house or cats, they have occasional accidents as well. Maybe sometimes you're out for dinner really late and you're having a good time and you get home and that dog, your dog, didn't really wanna to wait too much longer to go out and decided, hey, he's taking his grand old time out there. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna leave a present on his pillow. So, same thing happens with tegus. Are you guys really still here at number two? Like, I haven't convinced you yet? Well, okay, guys, I mean, I do need that watch time, so definitely stay tuned. But let's say you're at the point right now where you don't think humidity is that big of a deal, you know? And you're okay with the idea of feces existing in your living environment, not being in a toilet or anything, and not being too sanitary. Let's just get by that. I feel like maybe some people, you know, not everybody's that cleanly or cleanly or whatever that English word is. Let me explain just what that low humidity level is gonna do because I'm assuming, like I said, you don't really care about humidity and you're obviously gonna choose lower humidity over the potential of destroying your house with trying to keep up a high humidity level, which is not really even possible in most modern homes. So let's just go with that. It's gonna lead to what we have at number two, shedding issues. For those current Tegu keepers right now, we know how rough winters can be, especially with sheds. In winter, humidity obviously drops, especially if you're northern in North America, it's gonna be much lower than it is in Florida, but even in Florida, it's gonna drop. And a lot of tegus during brumation, when they come out, they have some of the worst sheds. In fact, this led to Rose City Reptiles, a very, very respected, just said respected, weird, a very respected tegu breeder to make a video on a little tip to get your tegus to shed if you're having a rough shed, particularly, as he mentioned, coming out of winter brumation. And this is really what you're gonna be doing to your tegu year round. You're gonna be having them stick with these sheds that should be coming off and it's gonna pile on and pile on to the point where really it's gonna be almost impossible to get off. It's gonna restrict parts of their body, specifically their fingers, their tail, and it's gonna really lead to a miserable life and cause additional health problems outside of just restriction. I had someone comment 
not too long ago that Tegu Care is not rocket science and it's really not that hard. And I heavily disagree. There's a lot of fine tuning to Tegu Care, especially compared to other reptiles. Reptiles alone are much more advanced pets to keep. Tegus, I feel like a lot of people are comfortable with them living through some issues, which obviously it's not, I mean, maybe completely their fault because like I said, those issues exist but are not readily seeable. You don't really observe them because they're really good at concealing that. They need to, to exist in the wild without displaying weakness. But I am telling you, from experience, from someone who people reach out to and tell their stories to about some tegu hardships they had and from talking to other breeders who have been doing this for years, there's a lot of fine tuning to get proper conditions for a tegu. And yeah, if your living situation is a little not on par, it's not gonna be the end of the world, I guess, for your tegu. There's still plenty of tegus who live long, decent lives while having some minor issues, but do you really want that to happen? And that's kind of my whole thing behind this number two here. Yes, it's gonna lead to shedding issues, and it's not really, to me, the specific shedding issue, the issue being here, if that makes sense. It's the fact that that would mean you're okay with some suffering in your tegu, with your tegu not being happy. And this is actually, you know, a pretty intense form of issue for your tegu or of intense form a problem for them. Shedding is huge for reptiles and could cause a lot of issues if they're unable to do that. So this is, I don't want to downplay it, not a minor one, but it's just saying in the plainest sense that you're okay with your tegu not being in its most optimal environment because you get to enjoy it more and that just does not sit well with me. All right, all right, let's talk about number one here if you guys are still interested in permanently free roaming your tegu. Number one to me is that they're much more prone to accident free roaming, whether that be escaping, whether that be accidentally ingesting something they shouldn't be eating, that happens much more often if they're out free roaming and not in some contained environment. I mean, relating back to dogs again, because I'm a dog owner. I, I, cats, I love all animals. I just own a dog right now. But my dog, you know, anything that falls on the floor. He ate a piece of paper yesterday. A piece of paper. He's been on a diet because he was a little overweight, a couple pounds overweight, and has been getting back at us by just eating anything that is on the floor. It doesn't have to be edible. It could be whatever. I mean, it was literally a piece of a sugar packet that my girlfriend Olivia put in her coffee. I mean, that's crazy. And that's exactly what a tegu can be doing. And at least dogs are a little bit more trainable. You know what I mean? It's a lot easier to wrestle, let's say, a dachshund chihuahua than a tegu who is all muscle. And oh boy, guys, let's just say your tegu escapes with everything going on in the United States right now, tegu-wise, reptile law-wise. Do you really think we need more tegus escaping and then, you know, some person on a jog seeing a tegu calling it in, then it's all over every newspaper and news channel and then suddenly legislation is passed because some reptile got out and now everybody thinks that reptile is everywhere and it's going to destroy their homes, which apparently a tegu is going to do and has been propped up to do in a lot of media in the southeast, but whatever. Basically, it's not only going to perhaps impact yourself, but also other people. Oh, and this is totally besides the fact that, let's say, I don't know, your tegu bites someone you have over. If they sue you, uh, you're not really going to have insurance covering any of that. You know what I mean? You're really opening yourself up for a lawsuit is basically what I'm saying. Reptiles, not really often covered under house insurance, home insurance. Personal life insurance, I don't know what insurance it would fall under, but I think you get what I mean. All in all, guys, we covered four main areas that alone, just by me saying it right now, should tell you that permanently free roaming is a problem. That is number one, it could cause your tegu harm, and that alone should be the end of the conversation. Number two, it could cause you or someone else harm. Number three, it could put you in financial struggle by destroying your house or opening yourself up to a lawsuit. I mean, being next to feces also for long periods is probably not that great either. And I know this is probably a stretch one, but it has to be said there is definitely the potential for that to happen. And number four, it can make the reptile hobby look bad. We got to be very particular about how we keep tegus currently because this is getting worse. Everybody's passing anti-reptile laws 
and tegus are at the forefront. So we really need to show that we can care for these guys and do our best and that we're not cutting any corners. Well guys, this video uh, took a much more fiery, passionate direction than I thought it was at the beginning of the video, but just hit record and went with what I went with. Really when it comes down to it is people just downplay Tegu Care, and I don't know exactly why. I think a lot of people do it to hype up their ego a little bit, make it seem like it's not as big of a deal as it is, and they just know what they're doing. But really, this is another step in an already complex hobby. These are advanced animals we're keeping, whether you want to admit it or not, it is not like the average pet out there. So you really need to know what you're doing, and free roaming permanently is just not one of those things that you should really be doing in 99.9% of cases. So that's where I'm coming from, guys. I hope that explains a lot. Now, if you do want to do something right husbandry-wise for Tegus, check out RepiLinks. It is a great nutritious diet for them. Actually affordable, some people say otherwise, but really, it only comes down to $8 a week, which is really what you would spend anyway. I feed Frappuccino my Tegu. RepiLinks exclusively been the healthiest since being on that diet mainly, so I recommend it. Code Professor Herb at checkout if you wanna get $5 off your first order. Anyway guys, make sure to hit that like, leave a comment below, it helps out a lot, and subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks everyone.